and uh, welcome to Charities in Focus, our cha Positive Charity Vibes. My name is Madeline Casty and I'm delighted today to be joined by Carl Wiling of the National Council of Voluntary Organisations. Hello. Hello Madeline, good to see you. Nice to see you Carl, how are you? Good. Uh, I, I'm a bit tired um, uh, and I'm a little bit hot because it's a, a sunny day and I'm in my attic room. But uh, no, it's um, it's a tough world out there. But I, I feel very conscious that you know I'm very fortunate and, uh, uh, and yeah, I'm in a good place, Madeline. Brilliant. That's that's really good to hear. And thanks so much for joining us today. So uh, let's get cracking on your your quick questions. So what I would love to know is what keeps you positive right now? Uh, two things. Uh, first is that I'm surrounded by wonderful colleagues, both inside NCVO, but also actually right across uh, uh, the voluntary sector. And, and people are really kind um, and, uh, and they keep you going and they, uh, and they talk about the things that we achieve together and, and uh, that, that sense that you're doing things that actually are socially useful, that makes me feel really positive. And then the second thing that uh, makes me feel really positive and keeps me going is that um, we're so lucky that we just see like this brilliant stuff all the time that people are doing. You hear about these fantastic things that people do with no money that are in spite of what society puts in front of them, not backed by what society does for them. And you just can't but help think that, crikey, like life, life is so much better because of what charities and what volunteers do. And that keeps me positive. Oh, I love to hearing that. So tell us a little bit more about the importance of charities and how charities are improving lives and keeping people positive at this time. I think charities change people's lives. I think it's as simple as that. I think volunteering will change your own life. I think getting involved in your community will change your own life for the better. And such is the broad range of, of what we do to sort of use that old expression we are uh, we're part of the warp and weft of society so that's anything from delivering services that uh, uh, that are really high quality and are different to what government bodies or the private sector can do through to coming up with new ideas about how to address long-standing problems we um, we bring people together. We we uh, uh, we we get people to do things that, that government and the and, and the private sector can't do in terms of getting them to volunteer at times. And then actually something that's forgotten about a lot of the time is that um, we're a we're a we're a vehicle. We're a means for people to express the things that they believe in and the things that make them happy, actually, and positive. We're not just about providing them with a voice. We're actually a means to sort of share the things that you love, like music and. Or or your values or the, or your faith and 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 in that sense I, I i think you we change people's lives because we are people's lives if um if i if, if charities didn't exist what you would find more often than not is that people would invent them which indeed they do every day yeah i love that i love the fact that you talked about new skills and doing things together because actually at the moment in lockdown Everybody is developing new skills from baking sourdough bread to learning Mandarin to all of those kind of things. So tell us, are there any new skills that you have developed during lockdown? Oh, um, uh, uh, working out how to stop a 17 year old and a 14 year old from just playing on computer games all day. I think that's not a bad dad skill that I've uh, uh, acquired. Um, I've um, I've become uh, I've become a bit of a sort of a film crew sort of expert. So um, I, I have to do quite a lot of these Zoom meetings, and I've done a few like media interviews. So I know how to set my lighting up and all that <laughs> sort of stuff, so that it, I, I don't look like um, I'm a bit of a strange man in a haunted house. And then on a more serious note, I've learned about how to manage myself and, and how to keep going because. Um, I don't particularly enjoy working at home on my own, if I'm honest. And it's interesting listening to all these uh, experts who are telling us that, um, well, the office is dead now and, um, and that we're all going to be working at home in the future. And I'm sort of thinking, you must be joking. Uh, because being on my own, just in a sort of a room, even like interacting with people uh, uh, via video conferencing, it's not the same. 
and and I think whether you call it mindfulness or something else, I think there's a skill involved in, in managing your energy and managing your emotions. And I think I've maybe I've learned a little bit of that just recently. Yeah. That sort of well the self well being, self care, self what do they say? Self care is health care. That's really important. Um now I'm not for one minute presuming that you are a you think of yourself as a superhero, but I actually do think of charity chief executives as being superheroes because I see them as people who change the world for the better and their skill is by and large seeing that change, seeing that vision and leading people to that. So while, while of course you would never think of yourself as a superhero, but if you were, what would be your superhero power? Um, I'm not, it's not answering the question, Madeline, but uh, uh, there's a t-shirt that I saw that I love and it said, uh, my superpower is volunteering, what's yours? Uh, uh, so the cheat answer is, I volunteer. Um, the real superpower? Many, many years ago when I was trustee, um, uh, the chief exec of the organisation that I was then a trustee of, she said, you know, this job is bloody hard. and. Um, and what I look, um, she said actually what I look to NCVO for and, and what I look to, to you for and, and colleagues, she said, well, I, I want to be able to get home in the evening and I want to be able to feel like I'm making a difference and I'm doing the job well. She said, so what I want from you, she said, I just want to know that everything's going to be all right. Mm. And it, it really stuck with me. And, and I'm sorry if this sounds a, sort of a bit sort of emotional, it's not quite the answer that you were looking for, but Honestly, if I had a superpower that I think people could do their jobs and, and get to the end of the day and sort of think, we're going to be all right. I think that would be an absolutely amazing superpower if I help them get, get to that point in the day. Yeah, no, that sounds really good. Um, and, and being happy at work and, and, and knowing you've achieved something matters tremendously. Um, so what tips would you give to others working in the voluntary sector and the charity sector to stay positive at this time? So um, first of all, networks are everything, and, and 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 keep talking to people, and don't be frightened of admitting that you're having a bad day, and that not everything is going well, because uh, I think if you internalise that stuff too much, um, uh, you won't make it through the week. I think the second thing I would say, and and, and again in the spirit of honesty, you know, I mean I've been feeling this a bit recently, and that is you can't save everybody can't solve everybody's problems as much as I'd like to at times. I think it's very easy to sort of uh, uh, beat yourself up when you know that there are organisations out there and you, and you can't support them when they need you. All you can do is your best. Um, someone said to me, you can't stop trying to boil the ocean. And, um, and and sometimes I think you don't look after yourself if you're constantly sort of trying uh, uh, to boil the ocean. Mm. And then the, the the last thing I would say, and, and it's your point about self-care, Madeline, um, you uh, you've got to have you've got to have something else in your life. Uh, as my previous boss used to say, you know, you've got to have a hinterland. And for all of us, that's going to be something that's a bit different. So for some of us, it's music. Uh, for others, it might be uh, um, going around, uh, it might be gardening or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's running. Um, I'm not very good at it. Um, in fact, I'm very slow and, and, I'm, and I'm not doing it as much as I want to. And, and, and actually, that's a sort of a, I need to sort of give myself a bit of a talking to about that. But uh, for me, just that time on my own for half an hour where I go for a run, I can either listen to some music or a podcast and it and it enables me to think about other things that are not work or um, mm. yeah something like that is is really important I um, I heard a politician say um, uh, uh, I think I think uh, the expression was um, I um, I go and watch football to forget about my problems but I go and play football to solve them and I really liked that so look after yourself by finding something that you do that will, that will give you a bit of latitude and, and enable you to look at your problems in a different way and, and that thinking time will, will 
will, will actually be worth its weight in gold, I think. Yeah, being positive, being realistic, switching off occasionally, thinking about something else and thinking about something that gives you joy all help to be positive. Carl, thank you so much. It's been really enlightening. I've learned so much from you. Um, it's great to have that insight into how people with a job as pressured as yours and the charity sector keep going and keep smiling and keep inspiring others. So thank you so much. And so that's it for today. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.